Hi everyone, Grant K for the Smoke Learning Channel. In the previous video, we looked at the Live Preview Result Viewer in action. This gives an accurate pixel-based view of your 3D composite, including any post-processing effects such as lighting, motion blur and anti-aliasing in Smoke 2017. As a reminder, this is the new default viewer in action. But if you toggle the 3 keyboard shortcut, you're able to switch between the old 3D geometry view and the live preview. So in the context of action, you can pretty much create finished results. But if you wanted to build further onto your composite, you actually have a few options. Looking at the ConnectFX schematic, you could take the output of action and plug it into other processing nodes in the flow graph. So the basic concept is that you take a result from one node, plug it into another and process it further. Hence your flow graphs will grow as you use more processors. But coming back to the Action 3D Compositor, there is additional information you can output other than just the final rendered result. This is similar to other 3D applications like Maya and 3ds Max. So in a typical 3D pipeline, you would have multiple render passes representing different pieces of 3D information. Action has also been able to do this for a while, but the output workflow was fairly limiting for 3D post effects. In Smoke 2017, this has all changed, and the Action render outputs now have a similar workflow to what you would find in other Autodesk 3D applications. Let's break this down further. Select your Action node to see its controls and click the output menus. The Action Render Outputs uses a system of render layers and render passes. So similar to Maya, you have a render layer and you can define multiple render passes to the layer. You can actually create multiple render layers and have multiple render passes assigned to each render layer. This is a much more granular way of defining your Action Outputs compared to the previous version of Smoke. If you're a long-time user, it might take a small time adjusting to the new workflow. However, you can still work in the old methodology while you get used to the new one. For example, each render layer has one primary output. You can still add multiple render layers, or what you knew as render outputs, and define a different primary render pass per layer. So I'll create a second render layer and assign it a mat. And another render layer and assign it as the Z-depth. So this is exactly how you had in previous versions. The problem with the old workflow is that for every render layer is that you would have to name them individually as well as go through the object list and assign which 3D objects are part of that render output. Now that might not sound so bad, but when you start breaking down your 3D composite to isolate specific objects or perhaps creating a distinction between foreground and background objects, you would need to do it for every render layer. As your 3D composites get more advanced and you want to do more things with render passes, the old workflow becomes very counterproductive. So I'll delete the extra render layers for now and show you the new workflow. Just before I start, one small habit I'd like you to get into is to always select your result view before toggling your outputs. If you don't do this, the views will not update when you start adjusting settings. With that out the way, the first thing to know is that you will always have one render layer with one render pass by default. This render pass is normally the composite or final render output and you can see it defined under the primary output header. The primary output can actually be in any render pass that you saw earlier, but you don't need to do anything as this is just a default setting. The middle section of the interface covers your render passes for the selected render layer. Straight away, you can see the comp render pass and it is defined as the primary output. The small colored dot to the left of the comp render pass corresponds with the active output of the action node in the ConnectFX schematic. So the action node is currently only outputting the composite result. If you start clicking through the list of render passes, they will be displayed in the result view. At this point, you are only looking at the image data. I'll reiterate that you are not assigning any render passes as an action node output at this point. 
your action node will still only have one output in the ConnectFX schematic. If you want to activate a render pass as part of a render layer output, click on the relevant greyed out dot next to the relevant render pass. When you do this, each render pass will have its own coloured dot, and if you look at the action node, you will see each render pass output with its colour matching the output menu. You could then take these render pass outputs and connect them to other parts of the flow graph. Now there are a couple major benefits with this workflow. Firstly, let's say you need to rename all the render passes. That's pretty easy. Select the render layer and click Rename. You can call this whatever you want. When you click Enter, all the render pass outputs are renamed. The second major benefit is the object list to the right of the interface. Using this list in combination with the Action Schematic and the Edit Outputs tool, you can choose what is rendered in the current render layer. And as I'm sure you have already guessed, that any changes you make to the object list will automatically apply to all the render passes for this render layer. This is a massive time saver instead of doing one render pass per render layer at a time. The final benefit, which is equally huge, is if you want to break down your action composite into multiple render layers and render passes to have a very granular workflow, you can do this in a very easy way. Just select the existing render layer and click Copy. A new render layer is created with a copy of all the assigned render passes. You can now go ahead and rename it. You can see how this is reflected in the Action node in the ConnectFX schematic. And as I mentioned earlier, you can now edit the output list for each render layer and this will be passed on to all the render passes instantly. This is a major improvement over what was available in the previous version of Smoke. Now let's discuss some of the details with regards to render passes. Firstly, when you click through the render passes, you are simply viewing them. If they're not assigned as active render passes for output, then they will not impact on your system's performance. The render passes will only be generated when you explicitly turn them on. Now you can use either the one or two keyboard shortcut to navigate up and down the active render passes. To view any inactive render pass in the viewer, simply select the text in the list. Now there are a couple global as well as local controls for the render passes. The rendering tab contains a variety of global settings that control the visual properties that are displayed in the composite. It's pretty self-explanatory but I just want to point out anti-aliasing under the Accumulation header. By default, only the RGBA channels have anti-aliasing. The Z-Depth render pass is typically aliased and jagged for various post effects, but you can change that to all if you're experimenting. Back in the Outputs menu, you will find the Global Threshold slider. This is very important because it controls how alpha is managed in the 3D information for various render passes. For example, there are a variety of values in a semi-transparent alpha channel. This normally happens when keying hair, smoke, water and glass. The threshold controls how much of the semi-transparent values affects the 3D information in the render passes like Z-Depth for instance. Finally, as you step through the various render passes, you will see the local controls update on the interface with each render pass. So starting at the top of the list, you have your composite or beauty pass output. Next is your matte output. Then you have ambient occlusion, which simulates soft shadows from indirect lighting. Next you have the shadows pass. And finally the Z-Depth pass for 3D distance information. Hopefully this new output workflow will make it easier for you to assign actions outputs and further enhance your composites in ConnectFX. Be sure to check out the other videos covering the features, workflows and updates to Smoke 2017. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Smoke Learning channel for future videos.